Sunday, August 23rd, 1981, Maurice Bishop delivered his last speech at the Marcus Garvey Day Rally in Market Square, St. George's, Grenada, where he delivered the captivating speech of what it takes to defend the revolution. I am Lady V, and this is the final episode of that famous speech, Maurice Bishop saw them coming. What we are discovering more and more is that we in Grenada increasingly do not have to respond to these attacks. These attacks are responded to by our friends, the masses of the Caribbean in their own countries when the attacks are made. We also have comrades to see this present period in the context that the American administration, that Reagan and his warlords are daily losing more and more credibility among their people. The international recession, which has meant a much lower standard of living for the people of the United States, which has meant more people are being thrown out of jobs, which has meant that many social welfare programs are being cut. Every single day they have to keep promising that tomorrow things will be better. And the military industrial complex that really rules the United States, the only answer they have is to step up the arms race. Because making arms, making bullets, producing bombs, that requires a lot of industrial activity. And the military industrial complex, the rich that control the United States, in reality, they need to have a war. They need to have an arms race in order to get the economy moving again. In order to get the super profit coming once more. So apart from sacking the workers, one of the things that they feel it necessary to do is to every day find new ways of creating greater and greater tension in the world. Every day to cause more and more warmongering talk. Every day to more and more threaten more and more progressive countries. And eventually hope that the people of the United States will get to the stage where they accept and they believe that a war is necessary in order to save themselves in the United States. That is the strategy that the Reaganites are employing. And this cowboy pride and cowboy desperation that we have seen in the past few months also means that they have to do certain things around the world. They have to take certain forms of military and aggressive action in order to justify to their people all of the statements which they have been making and in order also to please the big capitalists in the United States who want to see the arms race going again. That is why a few days ago there was this unwarranted, unprovoked and terrorist attack on two Libyan planes that was shot down in the Middle East. We had these planes just off the coast of Libya, inside the territorial waters of the Libyans, and the American planes went there and shot them down. This was clearly done with a great deal of premeditation. It was clearly a plan which was worked out. And it is clearly equally part of this overall policy of trying to justify now to the people of America that things are so bad in the world that only a new war will be able to solve their problem. It is also in this context that we have to see the announcement made last week Sunday that a neutron bomb was going to be produced. Now here is a bomb, sisters and brothers, that when it is dropped will only kill human beings and human life in general, 
but will leave all property intact. Here is a bomb that if dropped in this market square right now, would have the effect of killing all of us, but will leave all of these buildings standing untouched. What kind of devilish and demonic imagination can think of such a bomb? And this man, Regan, chose last week, Sunday, the 9th of August, to make this announcement. He chose that date because that date coincided with the time when the Americans had dropped the atomic bomb on Nagasaki in Japan and caused the death of hundreds of thousands of people. That is the extent of the arrogance and the contempt with which humanity is now viewed. We also have to see this in terms of the new relations that are being strengthened every day between the United States and South Africa, where this Reagan administration is no longer even trying to pretend that it will take an anti-racist position in the world. But openly, they come out, they announce their willingness to deal with South Africa. The South African ministers can openly go to the United States, accepted and dined and wined, and there they plan ways of keeping the blacks in South Africa in a state of continual oppression. And there also they plan ways and ways of keeping the blacks in South Africa in a state of continual oppression. And there also they plan ways of ensuring that the people of Namibia will have to continue to fight with arms in hand in order to achieve their independence. Because that independence is going to be continue to be blocked by the United States and by South Africa. Comrades, we have to see all of this, therefore, in light of the fact that the Americans have come to the conclusion that the revolution is so popular, that the revolution is so organized, that the revolution is so vigilant, that the revolution is so strong, that the only possible way in which they are going to be able to overturn this revolution is if they come with troops and land themselves. That is obviously the conclusion that they have come to. And that is why we have seen these maneuvers which took place two Sundays ago. Maneuvers which were codenamed Amber and the Amberines. Maneuvers which saw a battalion of the Rangers which are normally stationed in Washington brought across to California and from California they were flown non-stop, thousands of miles, non-stop, straight to Vieques Island of Puerto Rico. Now the reason that these Rangers Battalion had to be transported to California in order to do this long non-stop flight is because they were practicing a relatively long stop journey that would be required if they had to lift their Marines from Miami to fly them straight to Grenada in order to have a direct invasion of our country. So they were practicing a long range non-stop flight. These people also chose the island of Vietnam because Vieques, like Grenada, is of a hilly and mountainous topography. The terrain in that country is not unlike the kind of terrain that we have in Grenada. So the maneuvers had to be done on a place like that. Vieques was chosen for that reason, and so too the Rangers Battalion was chosen for that reason. Because the Rangers in the American Army are one of the, the, the units that specialize in terrain, in hilly terrain, such as we have in Grenada. You can also see, comrades, in this maneuver that they just carried out, that these people were making no attempt at all to hide their real intentions. They were not making any attempt at all 
to try to pretend that it was not Grenada that was involved. They, when they got to Puerto Rico, the man called Rear Admiral Mackenzie called a press conference. And in that press conference, he was boasting openly that the maneuvers were being done so as to demonstrate to the people of the Caribbean the might of the United States Armed Forces. That the maneuvers were being done so that Cuba, Nicaragua, and Grenada, which he described as practically one country, that these three countries would understand that the American army was ready and able to use direct violence against the revolution. In that press conference, he gave us the reasons for the attack on this country called Amber and the Amberines, which you will see is like Grenada and the Grenadine Islands of Caracou and Piti Marti, because he said that this country, Amber, was unfriendly to the United States. He said, secondly, that this country had not called any election and the Americans wanted to put troops down there so that elections could be called. And after elections, a government would come into power that would follow Washington's brand of democracy. He said, fourthly, that they were attacking Amber because hostages, American hostages, had been seized in Amber and it was necessary to free up those hostages. And he said simply that they were attacking Amber because Amber had been exporting subversion and revolution to neighboring countries in the Caribbean. I am sure that Congress would recognize... I am sure that Congress would recognize that all of these pretexts and justifications which were being given by this Rear Admiral Mackenzie are pretexts and excuses and the same kinds of lies which they have been trying to spread about our revolution over these past two and a half years. Certainly we recognize that they have been making noises about elections. Certainly we recognize that they have tried to indicate from time to time that the Grenada Revolution is subversive and is training terrorists, as they call them, from neighboring countries, when they know full well that this is untrue. These excuses and justifications are being practiced at this time because the Americans understand well that in any situation with invasion of our country, they are going to have to come up with some justification as to why they came to attack our little island. But if you want perhaps the best possible example of the vulgarity of these people and of the extent to which they were not trying to hide the fact that they were talking about Grenada, they got their troops to land on the southeastern tip of the Ekes in just exactly the same way that on the southeastern tip of a map of Grenada, you will actually see the word amber appearing. You would actually see amber appearing next to Prickly Bay in the Lansapine area, which as all of us know, is in the area of one of our major security installations. And which as all of us also know, is in the area of some of the best beaches in our country, and therefore one of the most likely places that these people will try to land in the event of any invasion. It is also the area, of course, in which the capital of our country, St. George's, is located. And St. George's has all of the strategic targets that any invading enemy force would wish to crush in the first few hours and the first few days of any fighting. The fact of the matter is, therefore, that when these people come out and they speak of Amber and the Amberine, and they do not even try to hide the fact that by talking about this Amber, they are talking about an invasion of our country. It tells you the extent of the desperation that they have reached. But equally it tells us 
of the extent of the response which must come from us as a united people in preparing to defend our country. Because in the final analysis, the defense of this homeland of ours can only come from us. In the final analysis, the defense of this country of ours can only be conducted by us, the people of Free Grenada. Regardless of how many friends we have outside, we are the ones who are going to have the primary responsibility of defending what we have fought for and what we are trying to build. And it is in this fact that the People's Revolutionary Militia achieved so much significance and importance. There are several very, very good reasons why we are building a revolutionary militia in our country. We can start from the fact that with an economy as small as we have, with a country as poor and as limited in resources as we have, that we could not afford to rely on a full-time standing professional army for the defense of our country. The comrades in the People's Revolutionary Army are serious comrades. They are comrades who will fight and give their lives tomorrow morning to defend the country. But at the same time, purely in terms of numbers, we need to have more people involved in this task of defending the country. And the fact is the economy could not afford to pay more soldiers to come into the army. That is one very important reason. A second reason that is equally important is that we know from the experience of other revolutions that the CIA will always try to reach elements in any standing army and try to corrupt them, try to bribe them, try to get them to sell secrets, try to get them to stand up on the side of imperialism and against the, the interests of their people. Now it is to the credit of our comrades in the People's Revolutionary Army that so far imperialism has had no success in all of the attempts to bribe any of our soldiers in the Revolutionary Armed Forces. <laughs> that has been the situation so far. And we certainly feel, as we know that you too feel, that imperialism will never have any success in this area. But nonetheless, we must recognize that imperialism will never stop trying. They will always try to identify officers and ranks from the People's Revolutionary Army and see if they can bribe and corrupt them. Because these comrades are easily identifiable and they live in areas of concentration. But when you come to a People's Revolutionary Militia, what you are dealing with there is not a full-time army. What you are dealing with there is a part-time army that works in the economy during the day, that is engaged in other activities during the day, that only goes to train on weekends and on Wednesdays, and only comes out in a situation of war. And in that time, what we have is a full-time army, the PRA, and a part-time army, the People's Revolutionary Militia. <laughs> what imperialism understands and understands very well is that when you are dealing with an armed people, when you are dealing with a revolutionary militia, the task of trying to find people to bribe becomes a much, much more difficult task. Because even if you manage to find one young brother, let us say, who is showing signs of weakness, when he goes back home, he might have two more brothers and two more sisters who are also in the militia who can identify his weakness and put him under manners in time before any damage is done.
Imperialism also understands that in a situation where they are dealing only with a standing army, a professional army, that their task is a lot easier for another reason. Because they know that all armies have to live out of army barracks. They know that there have to be army camps scattered around the country. All they have to do, therefore, is to try to identify the location of these army camps. And when they land in the country, or when they come with their ships and the planes, one of their first areas of attack will be to the army camp to see if they could wipe out the soldiers in the standing army who are in those camps. That is always one part of their strategy. Identify the camp and attack the camp. But when they are dealing with a militia, they are not able to go around and say, well, it's camps they have to look for. Because the people in the militia, our people in uniform, are living in ordinary houses, scattered in every village and every parish right throughout the country. Imperialism, therefore, has a much, much more difficult task. Because whereas they might pass down the road and see one of our comrades in the PRA and decide to try to attack that comrade, they might at the same time pass and watch what they believe is a young, innocent sister. And they pass and they leave her. And the minute they pass, the sister pick up the AK. And you know the AK only speak in Spanish. And Regan can understand it. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Give hey, Caribbean Inside TV.com fans, thanks for checking out our mini series, Maurice Saw Them Coming. Exposing the U.S. destabilization strategy. Remember to hit the subscribe button to keep the culture coming.